हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑन मैकेनिकल वाइब्रेशन द लेसन टू डील्स विद एलिमेंट्स ऑफ वाइब्रेशन so the first element of vibratory system is nothing but the spring element so as you can see in the figure as you can see in the figure the force is always proportional to the deflection so the force is proportional to the spring deflection so that can be written as f is equal to k into delta x and if we want to find out the potential if we want to find out the potential energy stored in the linear spring it can be written as u is equal to 1 by 2 k into delta x square so you can see in the figure where in y axis represents force and x axis represents deflection and the curve shows at different amount of magnitude of force how much amount of spring deflection we can have so if this curve is a straight line then we can say that the spring behaves linearly but for more or less for practical reasons your spring will behave non linearly so the actual springs are always going to behave non linear in fashion and the importance of this non linear behavior is very much important to understand the vibrational response so now how to deal with this non linearity now we can break down this non linearity into small segments so that it can be converted into linearity now there is a very much important term which is equivalent spring constant so the examples for this are cantilever beam that is a mass of a beam which is going to have no mass and a lumped mass is placed at the end so as shown in the figure a you can see there is a cantilever beam so beam is having one end of the beam is fixed and the other end there is an magnitude of mass m that is lumped mass is attached and it is allowed to only have vertical deflection or vertical displacement by a magnitude of x which is going to vary with respect to time and the materialistic properties are angles modulus the area of cross section and the area moment of inertia so if i am calculating the deflection which is going to happen for the actual system it can be given as delta is equal to mg l cube upon 3 ei and now we can represent the same system with respect to a spring and mass system which is having single degree of freedom system so what is stiffness stiffness is nothing but force upon deflection will assume that the force is mg and the deflection is delta and if we put the value of delta as mg l cube upon 3 ei the stiffness value comes as 3 ei upon l cube so we can represent the same system the same we can represent the same actual system with a mathematical model of stiffness and with a mathematical we can represent the same actual system with a approximate mathematical model of spring and mass system wherein the spring is having stiffness as k is equal to 3 ei upon l cube then there is a concept of equivalent spring systems for springs arranged in parallel and springs arranged in series so if i am having springs which are arranged in parallel as k1 and k2 and if some mass or weight is attached to it it is going to have displacement as delta st now once it has been displaced by delta st if we draw the free diagram 
once it is displaced by delta st if we draw a free body diagram for the spring and mass system it will be shown in figure c wherein the mass is having a downward force as w and the upward forces that is the reactive forces of the spring are stiffness into the displacement so those are for the spring k1 it is k1 into delta st and for our spring k2 it is k2 into delta st so we can show this by an equivalent spring wherein we can write it down as w is equal to mg which is also equal to k1 delta st plus k1 k2 delta st and w we can show it like this w is equal to mg which is also equal to k1 into delta plus k2 into delta so w is equal to mg which is also equal to k equivalent into delta now we can show the same system with the help of a equivalent spring mass system wherein only one spring will be there which is having stiffness as k equivalent so in that case your k equivalent will be written as k1 plus k2 so wherein if you are having springs in parallel you have to directly add the stiffness of each of the springs to get the equivalent stiffness similarly if we go for the springs which are arranged in series suppose for the springs k1 k2 as shown in figure a if we attach a mass which is having weight as w both ends of the springs are going to be get displaced by delta st but the spring k2 will have more deflection because it is in the vicinity of the mass so it will have displacement of delta 2 and k1 will have displacement as delta 1 so if you are showing it for the k1 spring the stiffness is for the k1 spring the stiffness is k1 and the displacement is delta 1 for the k2 spring stiffness is k2 and the displacement is delta 2 if you draw the free body diagram for the spring and mass system as shown in figure c you can see here there will be an equal and opposite force acting at this point so there will be a force of w and to have the equilibrium of the spring the same amount of force should be in the spring 2 so w will be al equal to k2 into delta 2 and on in the similar manner for the spring 1 also the weight of the object is going to be applied on the on the spring 1 so w will be also equal to k1 delta 1 so we have the equation as total displacement is equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 but your weight that is mg is equal to k1 delta 1 plus is equal to k2 delta 2 but your w is also equal to mg which is also equal to k equivalent into delta t that is if we want to show this arrangement of the springs through only one spring mass system wherein the spring is having stiffness as k equivalent we can write it as k1 delta 1 is equal to k2 delta 2 which is also equal to k equivalent into delta t so from this we can get the value of delta 1 as k equivalent delta t upon k1 and delta 2 as k equivalent delta t upon k2 and from this and from this what we can write it down as 1 upon k equivalent is equal to 1 upon k1 plus 1 upon k2 so if the springs are arranged in series this is how you have to find out the equivalent stiffness the next point of discussion 
is harmonic the next point of discussion is harmonic motion the simplest form of periodic motion that is periodic motion is nothing but the motion which repeats itself after equal amount of time so harmonic motion is a subset of periodic motion and harmonic motion is nothing but a type of periodic motion wherein the displacement and acceleration are always directly proportional to each other and the acceleration is always directed towards the mean position the examples of this are scotch yoke mechanism which is rotating with an angular velocity of w as you can see in the figure so if i am if i want to find out the displacement of it as x if i assume the displacement x is equal to if i assume the displacement x is equal to a cos a sin the displacement a is equal to if i assume the displacement x is equal to a sin theta theta can be written as omega t i can get the velocity as dx by dt that is omega a cos omega t and the acceleration as d square x upon dt square which will be minus omega square a sin omega t so which can be written as minus omega square small x that shows your acceleration is proportional to the displacement now there are different terms to be used for the vibration and analysis the first term is cycle that is motion of a body from equilibrium position towards both the extreme positions of the equilibrium positions are called as cycle the amplitude it is the maximum value of the motion from the equilibrium position so peak to peak it is two times the amplitude then the period that is time taken to complete one cycle it can be written as tau is equal to 2 pi by w whereas frequency is number of cycles per minute so f is 1 upon time period which can be written as omega upon 2 pi and the natural frequency the frequency at which a system vibrates without external forces after an initial disturbance and the important point to be noted here is the number of natural frequencies always matches with the number of degrees of freedom so if the system is single degree of freedom system it will have only one natural frequency if the system is having two degrees of freedom it will have two natural frequencies and likewise 